Hello and welcome to another Six Sages Gaming set review. Today we're talking about lightning and you better get ready because this set is going to shock your socks off. So up first we're going to be talking about Al Cid and for the love of everything that is holy I do not know why this card is not getting more love. So if you watch all the other set reviews up until this point I have just talked on and on about how this set is all about cards that play other things for free and if we've seen in the other videos there wasn't a lot of value in playing something for free other than the fact that you get it for free which I understand to a point is good enough in itself but then we get this beautiful beautiful card so we enter the field choose an active forward your opponent controls and then you get to play a lightning forward of cost three or less from your hand onto the field if you do deal at 6,000 damage so you're dealing the 6,000 damage to whatever your opponent has now 6,000 damage uh, is going to be killing most of their two drops and lower some three drops so it, it does a fair amount of damage on top of that, his ability completely resolves before these other two cards enter the battlefield. So again, Onion Knight, which is uh, immediately what I thought of, and I completely missed the starter card, which I'll talk about after, it deals 5,000 damage. So you're dealing 11,000 damage to something, which is going to kill everything. And then the card I missed, which I think either Listen Japan had one of them or it was at that point, out, one of the two, is we have Raigeta. And this de only deals 3,000 damage, so you deal 9,000 damage total, and chances are that's still good enough. But then you get to choose one of your opponent's forwards and dulls it. So not only are you removing one of their forwards from play by dealing 9,000 damage to it, you get to dull one of their other forwards. So this allows you to play two things for free, remove two of their potential blockers for that turn, and then get in some points of damage. So I love this card, and uh, again, I am just so shocked that it is not getting enough love. Um... Matt and I had talked about he is all the mono red. He's all on that train. I get it. Um, and I had talked to him very early on. It's like, I'm all about this, like, break break your stuff dot deck is what I called it. Because Lightning, and now with this great card, just has all these answers where it doesn't care what size it is, what power it is. It, it's just going to break it. So, yes, the consideration that you must make here is that you're probably going to be playing the starter card instead. So, it only deals 9,000 damage. Um but again, that's still going to kill things 99 times out of 100. So absolutely playable card. I love this. It is going in all my lightning decks. I'm probably going to be putting a mono lightning deck on the channel to start because uh, we are going to do mono elements for each one of them. And this one is just so, so good. So if you're using lightning, I have to it just implore you to include this card for how good it is. Yes, I realize it's only a 6K, so that is the one downside I will say about it. But if we play it in Mono Lightning, we can bump it up to a 7K with Lulu backup, and that does help a little bit. But ultimately, removing one of the guys and getting a doll another one is exactly where you want to be. So Al Cid is absolutely here to stay. And then we're going to move on to our next card. We have Amon. Now, this is a card that is generating a lot of debate between a lot of us and i will say that i am not the biggest fan of it it's a four drop ak nine if we're playing mono lightning that enters the field and dolls a character sure that's fine it can help you set up like a lightning play um, if you have red mage backup you can turn it into a higher costed um, lightning by giving it haste the really great thing about this card is that you get to choose a ford and dull it now it doesn't have a cost and that's why it is so good. I, I cannot stress enough that it not having a cost is so important. This can also help you remove problematic blockers, uh, say Prish, from uh, just walling you off for that turn. So to that point, I do understand why it's a good card. However, if we take this card into consideration, if we look at Time Mage from Opus 1 that says target uh, forward cannot attack, while they are slightly different because Time Mage um, simply would prevent them from attacking where Amon will dull it. it. They have the same philosophy behind them where it, this doesn't help you actively win the game. You have to combo this with other cards and it doesn't do enough by itself. That said, the card is 100% playable. I will make that note, but this is not a card that you're going to just say, you know what, it's just that good, it's going to go in every single deck. Um, I strongly feel that this is going to be going in a very specific type of deck. Um, I will have to look at the other lightning uh, legendaries and four costs that we have and I might not even play this in a mono lightning deck again that could be completely wrong maybe as we get a deeper card pool we'll replace it um, but chances are it's one of those cards that is just good enough right now and it's not until we see a deeper card pool that we're going to replace it so I really wish it had S effect yes I realize it probably would be too good but if you're playing mono lightning 
Um, you're probably playing the card anyway just because lack of options. If you're playing a dual element deck, you're probably not playing this unless it's in a control deck. So uh, Earth Lightning, I believe, would be a very strong uh, spot for this card. But again, we'll see. It, it, it's up for debate, um, and we'll see in what direction that this card ultimately goes. Knocking out both legendaries very quickly is Ida, and this is a card that I'm quite excited about uh, because if you saw in our Earth spoiler review, um, there's not a lot of cards that just push us in that mono element direction. And I think that every good TCG by its nature will have some mono element deck that is going to be a good option for people to get into. Now, um, the two obvious ones here so far are mono fire, which a lot of people would um, probably pick up right away. And as we expect from either magic or other games, it's just a, a staple archetype that's always going to be around. But I really do like the mono lightning variant and what it offers. And then we have this beautiful card that promotes that plan and lets us say, hey, I want you to have all lightning backups and we're going to reward you for it. So when she enters the field, or again, EX burst, which is also um, something I absolutely love seeing a legendary with EX burst, choose one forward with your opponent controls. So it does have to be opponent. Um, if inferior or equal to the light, lightning backups, you control and break it. So if you have five lightning backups, you can choose a five cost break it, four lightning backups, four cost break it, what have you. The one downside about this is that you have to have already progressed the board a bit to have this have any real relevant effect. Now, again, you could just run this deck that just spams two drop backups, play you know four backups uh, by turn two, and then killing a four drop or less is probably just good enough. The good thing is that her death effect, while yes, costly, just says choose a forward and break it. So yes, a little bit of testing will need to be done. Um, but in terms of a mono lightning break, uh, basically break your stuff dot deck, because I would keep calling it, um, I'm very excited to run three of this card. Yes, I realize that two is probably going to be the correct number because you never want to see it early. And EX bursting it early will probably do nothing, I realize. But um, strictly from a numbers perspective and sense of I want to use death as much as possible just because of being able to break any forward can be great um, I would like to see this card being run, ran as a three of so again not in every deck definitely goes into the only a mono lightning deck um, but I am very very excited to see in what direction those decks will go now to be a little bit more upset um, we have the four drop backup version which is a hero card, which really makes me upset when I was opening product and I realized that um, it's it's a strong effect. Don't get me wrong, but forwards of cost five or more cannot block. Okay, so that the the biggest ones that we can think of um, is Golbez, which wants to attack anyways. X Death wants to probably attack anyways. Yes, Prish is like the one relevant forward I can really think of, um, unless I'm missing another five drop, but. Five and six drops are already heavily punished in this set because we got another Alexander. We have Ice, uh, Vein, and Ice that also punishes five drops. So this just hurts a lot. Now, that said, I'd, I would run this as a tech one of because one, we're going to be playing the other Eda anyways in our Mono Lightning deck, uh, and it would let us get another death off the gate. But there are going to be some, uh, you know, non zero percentage of games where you just need this card. So. Yes, to a point, it's a really cute one of, and you can help it run. It helps you run an extra copy of Death. That's fine, but ultimately, this card is not doing a lot, and it, a lot of people could honestly just skip this card unless you're playing uh, the legendary version using it for Death. So, I think if the meta shifts that way, it can be a very great card, but ultimately, it doesn't impact enough, in my opinion, to be um, played in every deck that has lightning. So. Uh, pass for now outside of the mono lightning element decks. Maybe we'll find a spot for it going forward, but uh, it really hurts that this card is at a hero. So speaking of X-Death, um, a 6-drop 8k uh, enters the field. You need to play a mannequin of cost 4 or less from your hand onto the field, which is which is fine in itself. Um, your other mannequins get plus 1,000 power, and then for each mannequin you control, he gains 1,000 power. So yes, this goes into the mannequin deck. Um, chances are you're playing a Earth Lightning Mannequin deck just off the top of my head. That's what seemed to be the uh, best combinations. And then X Death is going to be beefy as hell. So in a lot of cases, this is easily a 10k if not bigger. And as we've seen in other uh, either dual series or power based comparisons, a 10k attacking every turn is just good enough. And that's going to be a lot bigger than what a lot of your other opponents' forwards are going to be. So this is a card that, again, is just 
probably turning sideways every single turn that it can. And again, any time that we see a card that has uh, a tribal effect to it, you know I'm going to be a huge fan of it. So also the one thing I'll note is if you watched our um, Earth review, Hashmill, or however you pronounce that name, can also turn your entire board into mannequins. And then X-Death just gets huge um, because it also doesn't say other. It just says for each job mannequin, so he would count himself. He becomes like a 16K um, and basically your opponent's losing whatever they're blocking with in that case. So I really do like X-Death. I think we understand that we will be having more mannequins in future sets because there's a lot of Dissidia characters that are not included. Um, right now, I'm not all that excited for the X-Death-based deck, but we will see uh, again. Very strong card, can combo very well with a lot of different things in Earth to make it that more aggressive cost. And being able to play a 4 drop for free, uh, sorry, 4 or less for free, can certainly help with his 6 crystal point cost. Yay, Gertie! Um, I love Moogles, we've been all those time and time again, but I like this Moogle uh, the second best, probably out of this set. Um, loses a thousand power for each Moogle you have. So again, considering that we're going to have things like Minwoo to consider, and we're going to have... Um, Larsa, I believe, is the name of the four that does the same effect. Being able to reduce power is huge. I can't stress enough that, yes, I understand that giving a power boost is also helpful, but being able to neg a card based on an effect to get around Minwu or to be able to push through damage with other effects, maybe you drop an 8k down to a 6k and then uh, Al Cid finishes it off, what have you. There's, there's other things that we can be doing. So I really do like Gertie. Um, I do want to play a Wind Lightning Control based deck, so we can play uh, Gertie and Nono, and I think both of those are completely fine uh, backup Moogles to have. Um, and then we get to play Black Mage as well, so we get to play this a very uh, aggressive focused control deck that can just pick off our opponent's forwards. Uh, maybe we're bouncing Black Mage back to our hand with Van. There's a lot of great things that we can be doing. And then Nono, of course, just activates them all. So yes, the cost is expensive at two Crystal Points to get the ability. However, when you consider how it can combo or inter interact or synergize with other cards in the set for both Opus 1 and Opus 2, um, I think this will absolutely see play, and I'm really looking forward to uh, collecting foil versions of this just to have in the collection. So, yes, more Moogles. I want all of them. Bring on Good King Mog as well. Then we have Kane, uh, which is certainly an interesting card. Now, it's only a, a 5k 3-drop uh, with haste, so it is certainly underpowered. However, if we look at the effect, um, which for anyone that's played the games, he, he's, it's basically jump. I really wish they could have just found a way to name it jump. Um, pay one and dull him. So again, he has haste, so we can use it. So I really treat this as more of a four drop card. Um, cannot be chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities until the beginning of your next turn. Um, and in the beginning of the next turn, his power doubles. So it is a 10k. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't have haste because you dulled it for the effect at that point. But... Um, it is a 3-drop 10k is how we should be considering this. Now, it is a little rough that we do have to dull it as part of the process, too, so you're removing your own blocker. Um, but again, in, in these games where we can set up, um, especially in Lightning, because it, it, Lightning is a lot about control, we can break our opponents forwards, slow down the game a bit, and then just attack every other turn with this 10k. It might not be good enough, but it is an option, so... I'm not saying that this card is going to be a three of, you know, in every lightning deck. I do like the options that it gives us by having a 10k attacker. Um, but ultimately, I think we can get around with some better options in lightning, uh, even if this one is a bit undercosted for what it can potentially do. So I love the artwork. <laughs> That's what really bums me out about it. I really wish we could use this um, uh, on a better card just so we could look at this beautiful, beautiful artwork more often. But. Uh, unless we're looking at the more aggressive builds, I think this cane will get a pass for now. And because we need more canes, um, 4 drop 6k, if you control Rosa, uh, it gains plus 2,000 haste and first strike. So that is great. Potentially an, an 8k haste and first striker. Um, the problem is we got to play Rosa, so that locks us into lightning water, which is not a favorite combination of mine, but um, it's still an option, I guess. And then other cards with the job Dragoon or card name Dragoon, other than Kane, gain plus 2,000 power. So it does synergize with the two Dragoons we've seen in the first set, um, and I believe there's another Dragoon common unit in this set as well, that it, it does count as a Lord, and then we go back to the point of um, 
if we want to use uh, Hashmo, which again is a little bit harder to pull off in this situation because knowingly that we're going to be playing Rosa if we're using this card just to make him bigger. Uh, but you can give your entire team plus 3k then, obviously minus Kane because the what the card says, <laughs> but uh, you could give potentially your entire team plus 3k with that. So again, any time that there is a tribal-based theme, it automatically goes on my list of cards to watch and decks I absolutely want to build, but ultimately I, I can see where this might not be uh, doing the trick. Kiros, if you control Laguna, gets plus 2,000 power and haste, so potentially a 9-drop uh, 3k is great, but this does fo uh, force us back into the Lightning Ice <clears throat> Final Fantasy 8 type of deck, which chances are can be fine itself. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, because, again, 9k power haster is going to be able to attack out of nowhere um, and surprise your opponent. Uh, that said, it does require that kind of two-card interaction, but if you're playing Ice Lightning, you have probably six, uh, five, actually five to seven Lagunas in the deck now. Um, so probably going to be fine. Of course, we always have the tutor option as well, so you maybe you want to leave this as a tech one of, and then you can Mog to tutor it up. Um, I think it's certainly going to be a playable card with those element combinations. Um, you know, it's just a powerful attacker for when you're going to have Laguna. <clears throat> and I really do love that we can play a Final Fantasy VIII deck, so sure. I know uh, Bird, one of the Six Ages, is going to be loving this card in his Ice Lightning Tempo deck, and I think it certainly is going to be playable. Um, it just It's a shame that it is locked into that very specific element combination. Again, probably fine, but would have liked to uh, see this happen. Now, again, if you are playing the Tutor for this, um, you have to use the Renoa. I just remember that as I was talking about it. Uh, I was thinking about Mog for some reason. So that hurts because we do want to play the legendary version instead. So interesting to see which direction that will go into. Uh, I love tutors. I was I was just rambling about them, even though I couldn't remember which tutor was which because I was thinking of the starter deck. Um, here we have a tutor for Final Fantasy XII. Again, it's we have to appreciate for what they are. Tutors not only allow you to run tech one ofs, which as we just saw is great, um, but it does help us use the S effects on certain cards. So automatically, it's going to be a you know a five on my list just because tutors are so good and only get better as the game the game goes on. So this is one of those cards that, especially for foils, um, since we don't know when we're going to see another tutor reprint for each one of the games. If you love Final Fantasy XII, for example, and that's something you want to play. Pick up your three foils of this, you know, on release or already, just as cheap as you can get them, um, and then just sit on because this is a card that's just going to keep going up in value as more cards come out. So, automatically playable. It's going to go great into a number of decks uh, that are focused around Final Fantasy XII, and I forget if they're aligned to a color or not specifically, um, but I know that there are a few different options at least for the deck building that we'd be given. Uh, three drop Cyclops. It is an EX burst, which I do like. All fords your opponent control lose 3,000 power. Now, again, because it's a loss of power, that is extremely relevant um, for some of the other effects that we have. We have, uh, especially in wind or, or a, different, a lot of the different elements, we have ways that we can deal 3,000 damage to the entire board. So let's say we're playing a uh, fire lightning deck. We could combo this with Megas to deal 6k to their entire board, potentially. Um, there's a lot of different cards that this interacts with. Now, the summons in Lightning are already so good. It is a little rough when you consider Odin, um, <clears throat> both 4 and 7. So I, I'm not convinced that there's going to be room for this. Um, the thing to note that it's very cute that you can use Black Mage and this to then shrink something by 7k, likely killing a lot of stuff. But um, at, at 3 cost, it is a little bit expensive for what it wants to be doing, but I could absolutely see this. Uh, seeing play in a deck that capitalizes on things like Black Mage or all the other effects that uh, shrink their power, which again gets around Minwu and things like that, which are uh, critically important as we're going to be seeing water probably be uh, more playable and more played rather in this next set. Uh, best common ever or best common in the set? One of the two. Um, so yeah, no surprise that Black Mage is really good. Um, I completely blanked on the interaction because I just was so focused on win, but um, this plus van is absolutely absurd. Being able to shrink potentially something by 4k every single turn, um, and the fact that it's a standard unit, so you can play three of them, uh, potentially three of them up to a time, maybe you play two of them in a turn even and just kill something that has an 8k, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, 
I love this card. There's a lot of different things that you can be doing with it. It's just great at any point in the game. It can potentially pay for itself, um, as Zap did point out. If, you, if you're playing this um, on the draw, let's say turn one, and your opponent played something that's a 4K and they discard a card to use it, then uh, wow, the, the, the tempo swing and the value there is uh, through the roof. Now again, that's only gonna kill things like uh, Tifa and a few other uh, Snow you could be playing if you overpay for them. There are limited things in which it can kill, but the potential for that, and as we go on, we'll see more lower costed cards, the, it, it's absurd. Um, so this is a very, very strong common that is going to be a three of uh, pretty much in every single lightning deck. I honestly couldn't imagine where you're not playing three of it, just because of how strong the effect can potentially be. Um, and then, of course, if you're playing a Wind Lightning deck and get to recycle this with Van, it is so spicy. Absolutely so spicy. Then we have Golbez, which is an 8-drop, which is certainly a lot. And I know a lot of people are um, trying to make this work, but his cost does get reduced for each Arc Fiend you have of different name, excuse me, in your break zone. So there's uh, four different ones, if I remember correctly. So um, potentially it can be free. Now, the important thing to note here is that it doesn't say it cannot be reduced to zero. So yes, in a perfect world, you could play this for free. Um, and anytime you can play a, nine, a 9K power for free, you probably should pay attention to it. Um, and then what helps is the different abilities it has. So when he attacks, you can either dull something, <clears throat> deal 3,000 damage to all four of your opponent controls, or just get a card back from your break zone of the Arc Fiend type uh, and add it to your hands. So you get this, you can help pay for something for the rest of the the game with it by just being able to recycle two, uh, two crystal points every turn. So it's certainly a strong card. Now, the hardest thing about this will be the deck construction. Um, it's not an easy brew to put together, um, you know, because at most you can only run two of each of the Arc Fiends, and then it's bad if you can't draw them in the right order because they, they don't align with what your deck's primary elements are. But if someone's able to make this deck work and they are able to pull off the the, the combo, if you will, with it. Now, I'm not gonna say it's better than the other Golbez deck, uh, per se. Now, if you if you get to live the dream, if you will, and play this for free or near free, and then get to Cyclops when he attacks, um, you do get to deal 6,000 deal six thousand damage, shrink them all by three, then deal 3,000 damage uh, to their entire board, can be quite devastating, especially if they just broke their Golbez. So, I'm very interested to see in which direction this deck is going to go, um, because as we know, people are probably going to be leaning on the Opus 1 Golbez for an Earth Lightning Brew, um, but again, kudos to the person that can make this work and makes can make it better, potentially, than the Golbez deck in the first set. So, very interesting to see what direction this is going to go in. Speaking of Golbez counters, actually, um, <laughs> Cypher, uh, and what I like about this, again, so mono lightning we're playing Gita. it's a three drop 9k with haste awesome uh but no mercy is really what makes it shine so break all the forwards of cost two or less now yes so if you're stuck with a two drop on your side of the field you're, you're gonna break it that's unfortunate but this is a straight answer to the gold best decks which previously lightning had a absolutely miserable time with um, unless you were splashing water for, say, Cloud of Darkness, like you had to have another element with it. So now we have an answer to Golbez in its own element identity uh, for Lightning, which then opens up the field saying, okay, we're not stuck just using Earth or uh, Water for those very specific cards that help. Now Lightning has this identity that can open it up to other cards. So I think this is going to be great. I would not be surprised if people are moving away from the Opus 1 Golbez deck, strictly because there's just so many op new opportunities for it. Um, though I do think Golbez is still going to be a very strong option in the meta, but are we playing this card? That all is going to depend on your locals or what the perceived meta will be. So I like this card a lot. Um, just having just having it printed uh, it does wonders for the meta, uh, much like in the same way, just having the option to, to use Cloud of Darkness had helped to a point. Golbez obviously still did very well, <clears throat> but I would I love to see this card, and again, helps out a ton with those mono lightning brews. Then we have the other version, which is um, upsetting by comparison, because the other version is just so good, um, and you probably want to do a 3-1 split anyways. <clears throat> but when he blocks or is blocked, he gets to choose up to two forwards and deal them 3,000 damage. So potentially, 
dealing 8,000 damage to whatever he blocks or is blocked by, um, which certainly helps in the more aggressive tempo builds, but um, 3,000 damage just isn't doing a whole lot unless you combine it with, say, Black Mage. So, yes, in this maybe Lightning Ice tempo deck where uh, we go to attack, uh, we can kill something with the effect. So, we, uh, let me say that. Play Black Mage, shrink something by four, attack with Cypher, deal at three, kill the blocker, get into point of damage. That's great, but generally speaking, two card combos are not where you want to be because uh, they're not always going to be the most reliable. And then otherwise, this just looks like a vanilla three drop 5k. Yes, it still deals the damage, but that's not the point here. So, yeah, I'm not completely sold on this, and I wish it did have a little bit more, but I think the, the rare version is just so much better that we're going to be focused on that one as is. Fleeting Flash, talking about more mannequins. If you have another mannequin, it uh, gets plus 2,000 power. So eight drop, uh, four drop, eight cost, fine. Has haste, better. Um, and then don't forget, you will likely have things like the mannequin backup, which will give it plus 2K for free as well. So it's a 10K attacker with haste. Um, again, I really like the mannequin deck. I think it's a few cards shy of where it needs to be, probably. Um, I'm going to start with Earth Lightning first anyway, so we can do like the X death. Um, and Opus 1 Golbez kind of combination with it. Um, I think it'll be a cute deck. I don't think it's going to be as good as that deck could be by just replacing the Madikins with more value forwards, but I'm going to try it anyways because I think it'll be fun. Uh, Drace, so again, a card that I like and is certainly very po powerful um, when you consider what it does, but I hate that it locks us into Lightning Water, just a combination I haven't been that big of a fan of. Um, so if you control Larsa, which is a great forward, we'll talk about in the water review, uh, the cost reduced by two. So it, it can be a one drop 6k. But then if you also have Larsa, which you do by that same proxy, gains plus 2,000 power in first strike. So potentially this is a one drop 8k power first strike in a deck that can also have Minwu or have Larsa. So it's the Minwu effect. Like that is, I'm not a fan of, again, those two card combos that very heavily interact with one another because, again, otherwise it's a three drop 6k and that is terrible absolutely terrible unplayable garbage but if we want to run the odds and we play larsa and we have three and three in a deck you might just get lucky and be fine with it but those two cards without seeing the other is a little bit underwhelming so hey run good and you'll have a very very strong card uh to help you out ninja is another card that i i do love so it's a two drop 3k i realize it's not exciting but Break Ninja as well as a four that blocks or is blocked by Ninja. So you, this is basically just a uh, suicide that we can use. And I love this card in Mono Lighting. Why? Because it's great on defense, great on offense. Your either opponent is losing their best card. Oftentimes you can set it up that way. Um, again, keeping in mind we have things like Amon. So we can we can dull the other four that they have that we, you know, we don't want them to block with. We attack with Ninja. They're either going to take the point of damage, which that's fine. Perfectly fine. Um, or they're going to be blocking with, let's just say, a Prish or something, like something high value, then we can go, okay, pitch this other card I don't care about or pay two crystal points, break your best guy. And that is where I think Amon is really going to start to shine by having this card that just says, I'm going to be able to set up the board state in my favor and make you lose your best guy in the process. Again, most cases, they'll probably just be taking the point of damage because they don't want to lose their best guy in that situation. But if they're already at five, six points of damage, maybe they just take the block because they have to. So... Uh, Ninja is a very, very strong common that I am I am fairly excited for. So I would not be surprised at all if this is going to be making a splash into a few decks. Uh, speaking of ninjas that won't make it, um, we have a backup variant, which it's nice that it's a two drop, so that's fine. But choose a four, deal at 2,000 damage. Now, again, it costs two, so it's not in a good spot for lightning. Um, if you're in a mono lightning deck, maybe... Um, but I'm not convinced even then, but just because of how limited backup space then becomes within that um, within that element combination or solo element combination, and then not at all when we play two elements. So we'll see. Otherwise, not that excited about it. Uh, Fusoya, it's a backup. Enters the field, deal five thousand damage. Um, what I like here though is the second part. So five thousand damage. I wish it was I wish it was six. That would have been just a little bit better for us. Um, but when it's put from the field into the break zone, choose a four from your break zone, add it to your hand. So yes, 100% do love this card in that regard because it allows us to use Delita then for value. Like 
the guy comes in and deals his 5,000 damage, hopefully kills something for you. Um, but what this ultimately becomes is then Sage uh, 4 through 6, because we get to play Delita, break it, play another one, Delita, break it. Yes. So as I was just harping on this entire time, um, two card combos can be a little bit rough, but when we're, we're getting back a character from our break zone, that then enables something like Ida's Death, or even if we're playing Gilgamesh, it's Divider. Like, there's a lot of cards in Lightning that are very, very good when you get them another S, or Army of One for Lightning. So when you then realize the high value that you get out of these, and then also remove one of your opponent's forwards, it's pretty exciting. So absolutely going to be playing this card in some number. Um, I don't know what number is going to be right. Again, if you're, you have to play it in Earth, um, unless there's a, another thing that breaks your own backup that I'm forgetting, um, other than just using one of your own read cards to break your own packups, which then that's terrible. Obviously, you want to use Delita because you get a 9k body out of it, and that's great. Um, but if you have to use something like Bike to break your own backup, then that's probably not where you want to be. So, yes, it's limited in that regard, but I do hope we will see more cards in the future that break your own backups. Andromalek, I believe is how you pronounce that. Probably terrible. Um, it's basically just Lightning Brynhildr, which Brynhildr was great. Um, and I like that this then opens up options more for that Lightning Ice deck I was talking about, dealing 7,000 damage. So the, the Ford does have to be active. That is the one downside to this. So if your opponent only has a 7k that they're attacking with, you can't use it like you could Brynhildr. That said, I think 7k is, is mostly a sweet spot and it's an EX burst, so it does open up some options for Lightning that doesn't say, okay, well, if I'm Lightning Fire, I have to play Brynhildr. You know, you're not stuck into that combination. So then we can play Lightning Water <laughs> or the other elements that allow us to have a little more flexibility. So I love what this summon does for the identity of Lightning and the flexibility it's going to give it. Um, this is basically just X Death. <laughs> Poopy X Death, as people keep referring to the mannequins. Um, any card of cost two or less put in the damage zone due to Arborous Simulacrum cannot use its EX burst. Um, can turn off your opponent's Moogle or Leviathan, the one drop Leviathan, but um, nah. Uh, the probably the best thing that you're doing this with this is turning off Golem, um, because then they can't give something plus two K power, so you can continue to attack, but. Even in the mannequin deck, which yes, we can make it a three drop AK, I'm not that all that excited for this card. So um, ultimately just gonna be getting a pass even with the mannequins in consideration for me. Uh, Reeve backup cannot be chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities. Eh. Um, inspire though, search one card named Kate Sith at your hand. So Kate Sith is a little bit lacking right now. Um, it does allow us to tutor up the one drop so we can dull something it is kind of cool um but again anytime we have a tutor effect like that that also doesn't cost anything besides discarding a copy of him and dulling um i'm very interested to see what other kate sith cards that we have so again one of those cards that if you want to if you're gonna bank on that being more playable pick up your foils now it's only gonna get better in time as we see more um kate Siths in the future and i don't remember how many were printed in the old japanese version but um, i do believe it was a good number so a card that, again, as the game goes on, as we get more cards, and if, as Kate Sith, I doubt we're, we'll ever get a legendary um, Kate Sith, but again, keeping in mind, if we did, um, I mean, this card becomes like a $5 rare, for crying out loud, um, and you know, especially if it's like a year or two from now that we get a legendary Kate Sith, for, let's say, just for giggles, um, this becomes a very, very popular card. So uh, now that I'm saying that, I do kind of hope that we that we would see that. Um, that would be fun, but unlikely, in, but if we do, uh, this card becomes insane. Uh, we talked about Dragoons earlier. Uh, you can give it first strike, and it has 5,000 power, so a little underwhelming, um, but in combination with the other cane, it can become a 7k 2-drop that can gain first strike. Um, I believe is all the abilities that it granted. It was just the power, so artwork's great. It can be fine, but um, ultimately, eh, eh for me. Then let's wrap it up. Top four. These should be absolutely no surprise. Legend is Amon, just because I think overall he has more uh, versatility. Um, again, Ida, I think I just love more in a mono lightning deck. But again, we got to talk about this set overall and the flexibility he has. So Amon gets that spot. Al Cid, play this card, guys. Come on. I we, we need to get on this hype train like right now. The card's great. 
I love this card, and it does a lot of wonderful things for Mono Lightning or Lightning decks in general. Uh, Grammys is a rare because, again, we just have to shout out a tutor whenever we get one for Final Fantasy XII in this case. Um, perfectly fine card. And then Black Mage is a common because whew, that card is absolutely nuts. So that's all we have for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and all the other set reviews we do. If you liked this video and want to see more like it, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We do appreciate that. Drop us a like, drop us a comment in the section below. We try to get back to everyone we can, and we love hearing what your guys' thoughts are on the set reviews as well. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming video. Have a good one.